Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers pit maneuvers, traffic stops, and deadly force, and is brought to us by THV11's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On the night of July 9th, 2020, Arkansas State Trooper Rodney Dunn turned on his emergency lights to attempt to pull over pregnant motorist Janice Harper for allegedly driving 84 miles per hour in a 70 mile per hour zone on Highway 67. Footage from Trooper Dunn's dash cam shows that Ms. Harper immediately slowed her vehicle, turned on her hazard lights, and steered her vehicle towards the shoulder. However, she did not stop because she did not feel safe doing so on the narrow shoulder. After just over two minutes of pursuing Ms. Harper at low speed, Trooper Dunn decides to execute a precision immobilization technique, commonly known as a pit maneuver, on her vehicle, causing it to veer left uncontrollably, hit the median, and flip over. In order to complete a pit maneuver, an officer first pulls alongside the target vehicle and meets its speed. Then, the officer gently steers the front quarter panel of their cruiser into the rear quarter panel of the target vehicle so that it spins out and stops. While the pit maneuver can be a safe method for ending low speed pursuits in the range of 35 to 45 miles per hour, it can become deadly when performed at higher speeds. According to an article in the Washington Post, at least 30 individuals have been killed and hundreds have been injured by pit maneuvers since 2016. Out of the 30 deaths, 18 occurred after officers tried to pull over vehicles for minor traffic violations like speeding, which is the offense for which Trooper Dunn was attempting to stop Ms. Harper. In the 2007 case of Scott versus Harris, the Supreme Court determined that an officer's use of a pit maneuver that left the fleeing driver a quadruple did not constitute excessive force because the court found that it was, quote, reasonable. After comparing the risks created by the officer's use of the maneuver with the risks of harm to the general public that the officer was attempting to eliminate, the court concluded that, quote, a police officer's attempt to terminate a dangerous high-speed car chase that threatens the lives of innocent bystanders does not violate the Fourth Amendment, even when it places the fleeing motorist at risk of serious injury or death. Given the fact that Ms. Harper was clearly attempting to comply with Trooper Dunn and it slowed her vehicle to look for a safe place to stop, it is difficult to imagine how Ms. Harper posed any risk to other drivers. However, courts have consistently found the use of pit maneuvers to be reasonable force, so it is certainly possible that a court reviewing this case would find Trooper Dunn's decision to be a reasonable use of force. They roll over, give me uh, AMS started. Got the number three lane shut down. Pull over when we stop. It doesn't matter, ma'am. 
Come on out. Feel like it was safe. I've got an ambulance coming for you. You need help? Hey, Sheila. Come on, can you come out? I'm trying to. Okay. I did. I pushed it back as far as it would go. Cause it was, it was looking it up. It's as far as it'll go back. Oh my gosh! I thought it would be safe for to wait until the exit. No, ma'am. You should pull over when law enforcement stops you. Okay? You were running 84 miles an hour, and I'm trying to get you to stop. Ms. Harper claims that she was waiting to pull over at the next exit, and Trooper Dunn tells her that she must stop immediately when being pulled over. The Arkansas State Police's Arkansas Driver License Study Guide, which, quote, offers information about Arkansas rules of the road and how to apply safe driving practices, states that when individuals are stopped by a law enforcement officer, they should pull over to the right side of the road and activate their turn signal or emergency flashers to indicate to the officer that they are seeking a safe place to stop. The study guide also informs drivers to, quote, pull to the nearest safest spot out of the traffic lane. In 2017, the Arkansas State Police reiterated this information in a Facebook post, explaining that, quote, if you see blue lights behind you and you feel scared that it is not a real police officer or you would like to drive to a safe or lighted location, first, slow down and turn on your hazard lights. This will let the officer know you see them. The post also instructs drivers to, quote, move to the farthest right lane and continue to drive to a location where you feel safe. Example, under a street light, a gas station, an exit ramp, or side road. You will not be be charged with fleeing if you are doing these things. You have a right to be safe. Although Ms. Harper followed these instructions to a T, in a statement issued after this incident, Arkansas State Police Director Colonel Bill Bryant implied that she did not comply with Arkansas law. His statement reads, quote, There's a fundamental state law none of us should ever forget. All drivers are required under Arkansas law to safely pull off the roadway and stop when a police officer activates the patrol vehicle emergency lights and siren. The language of the law is crystal clear. Upon the immediate approach of an authorized emergency vehicle displaying the signal to stop, the driver must pull over and stop. To support his argument, Colonel Bryant cited two Arkansas statutes, section 27-51-901 of the Arkansas Code, which states that, quote, upon the immediate approach of an authorized emergency vehicle, when the driver is giving audible signal by siren, the driver of every other vehicle shall yield the right of way and immediately drive to a position parallel to and as close as possible to the right-hand edge of the highway and shall stop and remain in such position until the authorized emergency vehicle has passed, except when otherwise directed by a police officer. And section 27-49-107 of the Arkansas Code, which states the quote, no person shall willfully fail or refuse to comply with any lawful order or direction of any police officer invested by law with authority to direct, control, or regulate traffic. Even though Colonel Bryant's statement is in direct contradiction to his department's previous communications on the subject, it is possible a court would agree with his new interpretation. In the 2002 case of McNair v. Coffey, the Seventh Circuit did not accept the defense defendant's excuse that they failed to pull over immediately because they wanted to get out of an unsavory neighborhood before surrendering, holding that, quote, This reason is not relevant. People ordered to stop, on probable cause to arrest, must halt immediately. They cannot make their own decisions about when and where they will surrender. Given the absolute language of Section 27-51-901, a court could easily conclude that Miss Harper was wrong for failing to immediately stop as required by the statute. And then when I pulled up alongside of you, you saw the state trooper, you looked over at me. Because I can barely see. Let's go over here. I lost my shoe. I'll go, we'll take care of that. Go sit down over here, okay? Let's be over the road. Sit down right there. We call it a pit maneuver when people flee from us or don't, or don't stop mean. from us. That's what happened, okay? Do you need to sit down since you're pregnant? No. All you had to do was pull all the Can you please call my husband? Yeah, we'll take care of that here in a minute. All right, here comes the ambulance right there. They've got to go down and turn around. Okay. Okay. What's your name? Nicole. Nicole? Okay, what Nicole what? Harper. Harper? Okay, is this vehicle registered to you? Yes. Okay. Where do you live? Sherwood. That's where you were headed to? Yes, I just left the movies. Okay. In Cabot. With... <laughs> With what? I just left the movies in Cabot. I went with my dad's girlfriend and my nieces. And I was on my way home. 
Okay, well I told you you were running 84 and then when I... I know that I know that I was speeding. I agree yeah, with you. I was speeding. All you had to do was pull over, ma'am. I, I didn't I didn't even think it was safe for you for me to pull over there. Ma'am, what we do out here, okay? There's okay. shoulders on the right and there's shoulders on the left. I just didn't to get feel like the shoulder was big enough okay, well, with the wall. Okay, well this is what happens when people don't stop for us. You we wreck us? We hit the vehicle. Do we anticipate them rolling over? Absolutely not. But we we stop the vehicle. I have no idea what's going on inside your vehicle or why you wouldn't stop. Trooper Dunn tells Ms. Harper that he had no idea what she was doing in her vehicle as justification for employing the pit maneuver. The Arkansas State Police Manual limits when officers can use the pit maneuvers, which it identifies as a use of force. The manual states that, quote, an officer is authorized to use non-deadly physical force upon another person if the officer reasonably believes it necessary to effect an arrest. But officers are only permitted to use deadly physical force, which is defined as force that is readily capable of causing death or serious physical injury under the circumstances circumstances it is used when, quote, the officer reasonably believes that it is necessary to effect an arrest or prevent the escape from custody of an arrested person whom the officer reasonably believes has committed or attempted to commit a felony and is presently armed or dangerous, or defend himself or herself or a third person from what the officer reasonably believes to be the use or imminent use of deadly physical force. Whether the use of a pit maneuver constitutes deadly or non-deadly force depends on the specific circumstances in which it was used. For example, in the 2021 case of Sabe versus Washington County Board of Commissioners, the U.S. District Court for the District of Oregon held that the pit maneuvers used in that case could not be characterized as deadly force, while acknowledging, quote, the obvious reality that pit maneuvers can be highly dangerous in certain scenarios, such as high-speed car chases. However, the court found the pit maneuvers in the case to be non-deadly force because, among other reasons, quote, video recordings of the encounter indicate the vehicles in question did not appear to be moving at high speeds when the pit maneuvers were attempted. In this situation, it is possible that Trooper Dunn's use of the pit maneuver could be characterized as deadly force, as the vehicles were traveling at a much faster speed than is safe for using pit maneuvers, which caused Ms. Harper's vehicle to flip. However, given her limited injuries, it's also possible the court would determine that the pit maneuver constituted non-deadly force, which means that Trooper Dunn's actions would be justified if the court found them to be quote-unquote reasonable. Because I okay. didn't think it was safe for well, you, that's no why idea. I didn't stop. I have no idea about that. Been doing this for 27 years, ma'am, and when people don't stop, we have no idea what's going on inside the vehicle, okay? And all you had to do, and I, I even pulled up alongside of you. I know, and then blinded me with the light. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's what we do is turn on our emergency lights and try to get your attention, okay? But when people don't stop for emergency vehicles, we end this right here, right now, before you get further into congested traffic. That's why we're here, okay? And no, we don't anticipate vehicles rolling over, or do we want that to happen, but it does happen, okay? All you had to do was slow down and stop. I did slow down. I turned on my hazards. I you thought I was doing see. the right thing. I know, I know, I do I'm understand what you're you, saying. Okay? But, I, but do you understand what I'm saying too? I, I didn't think this was enough room for you to come up beside my car and for you to be safe, honestly. Well, I get that, but this is what we do, okay? We make stops here every day, every night. 24-7 on these interstates. In 2021, Ms. Harper filed a federal lawsuit against Trooper Dunn, his supervisor, Sergeant Alan Johnson, and Arkansas State Police Director Colonel Bill Bryant. As of the date of this episode, the case is still pending and scheduled for a jury trial on June 28, 2022. Trooper Dunn has remained on active patrol duty and no criminal charges have been pursued against him. Overall, Trooper Dunn gets an F for employing the use of the pit maneuver after only two minutes of pursuit and no evidence of substantial criminal activity, failing to acknowledge or consider Ms. Harper's signals that she intended to stop, and for displaying poor discretion and a general lack of professionalism. At no point during the short pursuit did Ms. Harper do anything that would suggest to Trooper Dunn that some kind of immediate threat or exigent circumstances existed to warrant executing a pit maneuver. In fact, Ms. Harper did everything she could to signal to the trooper that she intended to pull over. It's difficult to understand how Trooper Dunn's actions could be considered reasonable given the circumstances. And this is yet another interaction where the legality and ethicality of an officer
officer's conduct don't necessarily align. While there is a legitimate argument to be made that Trooper Dunn's actions were technically legal, that does not excuse the lack of professional discretion or ethical consideration displayed by the trooper. And this interaction highlights the discrepancies that often exist between an officer's authority to uphold the law and their discretionary responsibility to do so ethically. No one was made safer by Trooper Dunn's conduct, and departmental policies that endorse conduct such as this should be reconsidered at the very least. Ms. Harper gets an A, because despite having just survived a rollover crash, she remained relatively calm and collected throughout the encounter, rightfully challenged the legitimacy of Trooper Dunn's actions, and followed up this encounter with the proper legal action. Ms. Harper's ability to remain calm and focused while still processing what had just occurred and shaking off the adrenaline of the situation was remarkable. Engaging with members of law enforcement is extremely stressful no matter the circumstances, but doing so immediately after a serious car accident requires a high degree of emotional fortitude. Aside from admitting to speeding, Ms. Harper did a great job of defending her actions to the trooper without admitting fault or sacrificing too much information, and it'll certainly be interesting to see how her case fares in the courtroom. I commend Ms. Harper for keeping a level head throughout this encounter and for following this interaction with the proper legal action. Be sure to give THV11's channel your support. You can find a link in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.